During the course of this particular documentary, we will be looking into PrimeXM's operations. PrimeXM, based here in Limassol, Cyprus, is run by Chief Executive Officer Christian Vlasianu, who joined the company in 2011 as a software engineer from IBM. Meeting today with Richard Bartlett, who is Global Head of Sales at PrimeXM. The company is a leading technology provider to the global financial services industry and connects its clients to hundreds of liquidity providers globally across an ultra-low latency network, which is supported by institutional-grade infrastructure. Looking a little bit further into how liquidity is accessed by retail brokerages and subsequently retail traders, this is actually a point that doesn't get questioned in the way that it should be. I think there's a lot of questioning on from brokerages and traders particularly about how prices are arrived at, but it doesn't really go much further than that, and I think it should. That's a, that's a good point. Um, and again, this is where an innovative technology provider can really help. Um, with PrimeXM having access to our own infrastructure um, means we can control um, how many how, many, how much connectivity we have to, to other liquidity providers. We have 150 and I think from a brokerage perspective it's very important from a scalability and flexibility point of view to have access to a diverse range of liquidity providers so you can accommodate different types of clients. So rather than just having, um, e even in the retail market alone you have different types of traders where say an EA trader uh, may demand yes. a different type of liquidity to a day trader. Yes, you and know? That, that type of execution causes different type of order flow to be submitted to a liquidity provider by a retail broker. This is which true. Which is something which in my whole career I've never heard anybody question a, a, a vendor on how different um, types of trading interfaces can affect liquidity order flow. In the institutional world, yes. In the retail world, I've never heard such a question come up. Indeed, well, it used to, the old style of thinking was one, you know, one solution fits all, but yes. as the trading community becomes more sophisticated, as the technology becomes more sophisticated, the brokerages themselves um, are also becoming more sophisticated and taking advantage um, you know, of this extended connectivity that's now available. So that they can really choose several different liquidity partners to work with um, for diversity reasons, but also to make sure they've got the right mix of liquidity to suit the different clientele that they have. And again, this, uh, with PrimeXM, um, we do support a huge number of liquidity providers. But we've also, a few years ago, thought, well, how else can we encourage and improve this process for the clients using our system? So we've set up a, a community where anybody using our XCOR system that's within this global infrastructure, that we actually encourage our clients to actually make and take or trade with, trade with each other and yes. use each other for liquidity. Now there's some major benefits here. One is performance because the trade flows are actually staying within this dedicated are, infrastructure are, of PrimeXM. Right. And to encourage this, we also charge lower uh, volume fees for interacting and trading with- Within the network. Within the network. Right. Now having said that, if, 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 um, if a particular user of the system needs to also access liquidity outside of that community, then of course we still support, yes, uh, yeah. support that kind of connectivity too. But if they can get a mix of trading with each other, okay, and taking advantage of the advantages there, then that's great. But in the very same vein, if they want to go direct to tier one banks, to exchanges, certainly with the cryptos now, again, because we're managing our own infrastructure, a lot of people now are wanting access to all the different crypto exchanges, which we are yeah. able to facilitate that connectivity because we're not just software, we're also infrastructure as well. So yes, indeed. It's about offer, offering a centralized service yes, that yeah. then makes it extremely reliable and scalable solution for brokerages then to, to build their business without having to have a different system for every part of their business. They can just grow from one solid foundation. This exactly, is the idea. and they're paying a cost per million for this, I guess. They Everything, mean, yeah. The actual capitalization. It's all under all, all the tools uh, and everything that PrimeXM provides. It's all within that cost per million. I see. Um, so the only, only other aspect of our service that would be additionally charged is for the hosting uh, yes. of platforms or applications that you may want to host in co-location to, uh, to the pricing engine and the LPs. Which is a very important yeah. matter, which is, goes in tandem with, with having a, a system where you have a community of trading entities on, able to, to interact with each other. That speeds up the trading process, gives more of a, a, an access point for brokers using a, a, a technology integration company like PrimeXM. But this leads on to co-location hosting. That's another very important component. And actually it, it is quite 
well known that 49 to 50 percent of all tier one bank liquidity emanates from six banks in London. So it would be natural to host in Equinix's data center on LD4. It's only 20 miles from the square mile and therefore what you're doing is connecting points of presence, dedicated, dedicated lines which Equinix manage and, and host to the banks and from the banks and to all the other venues, the other non-bank venues. So that is the epicenter of, of the majority of liquidity. Then you have New York and Tokyo behind that, but London's LD4 it's the, is it's the, it's the epicenter. Leading. Yeah, indeed, that's so bad, So the question is that with, with regard to, to co-location, hosting it in London, where you have the, the connectivity side to the institutional tier one providers, is very important because that's a static location. Moving that towards the traders is counterproductive because of the length of time that a trade pr that a price would have to go. Price would change by the time it got to the hosting centre. Then it has to be distributed to traders and venues that are all in separate locations. So surely it's better to host in London for the banks, yep. and then connect the traders via some kind of hosting solution in LD4 that makes them appear as though makes their their trading system appear as though it's close to the venues. Yeah, via VPN or something. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, there we see in the market some some brokers or financial institutions believe having their say MetaTrader serve, for example, closer to where the clients are, but then their liquidity say coming from London or New York. Right. Well, when in reality. The benefit you want, we want everything co-located. So you want your pricing, your, your, your server next to where your pricing is coming from and where your execution engine is. Yeah. And as you quite rightly said, if they're co-located, the price updates from the LP are hitting the platform. Okay, there's no, there's, there's limited latency there. And then the clients can always use a VPN then yes, to connect into that environment where all the decisions and all the communication takes place between liquidity provider, execution engine, XCore in Prime XM's case, and trading platform and that's yeah. why we've adopted the ability to to host the platforms as well for clients so again it makes it easy for them we can actually take care of the software the connectivity but also then take care of the co-location and, and the hosting element as well within the same infrastructure and this yes. is a very powerful proposition then because it's one one entity with experience um, that has, has, has this infrastructure and technology where they can face us for all of that component, all those components of their business in one. I agree with that. And actually in terms of uh, regional, regional differences, what's happened is there's been a, a false sense of security that's been lulled, that a lot of, um, a lot of retail uh, market participants have been lulled into because uh, as we were talking about earlier, the MetaTrader 4 platform is a kind of placebo effect in that everyone's, everyone sees the same, end, the same end user interface, which means that the assumption for those who don't necessarily delve into the technology behind it, think that it's all the same system with all the same offerings, yeah. which is fair. However... Fair to assume, but it's yeah. fair to assume, <laughs> exactly. However, the, because of the way that MetaTrader has now become disconnected from, from its original purpose, where it was a closed... Uh, entity with a dealing desk, so many different components can be behind it, including not only market, real market connectivity, which is now very much commonplace, but where the hosting is, how the dedicate, if there are dedicated uh, points of presence connection that give you a dedicated pipe to a, to a venue to execute trades quickly without any interference between other, using other traffic on those particular lines, or how far they are. So if you're looking at um, many now brokerages in the Asia Pacific region, which are new and have been recently started up and managed to gain a huge amount of retail audience, usually on a B2B basis through IBs and portfolio managers, th this is critical because a lot of that trading is done using EAs, expert advisors, which are executing trades very, very quickly, often programmed by the actual IB themselves, to manage the portfolios of the of clients in mainland China, in Southeast Asia, in, uh, in in Hong Kong, in various other parts, in Singapore, places where people are very analytical. So, managing a um, trading system which has a lot of executed trades on a multi on an MAM account, multiple account manager, that are executed very very quickly. Having a low latency system and having yourself being able to be near the bank execution is very important. And it is a fallacy to assume that people in Southeast Asia don't understand how, um, how trades are actually booked. That they are very aware if they're being be booked, they're very aware if their trades are not being executed properly. But the question is, how is the time, how do you structure it so that you make sure that 
the trades are, are, are executed quickly and at the right price with, with not much with minimal slippage. That's that's really important. Yeah, you know, it's just down to the, the two key aspects: software and uh, and infrastructure. That's right. And actually, Leah, you you've really had some, a lot of experience in working with those particular brokerages and companies that are setting up that type of system, mm -hmm. and they are absolutely looking for a high quality, very dedicated execution system. These days, the FX industry truly is borderless. And actually, with such a focus on Southeast Asia and other very, very distant markets to where the actual liquidity originates from in the first place, it is vital for technology providers and brokers to look at a truly holistic solution. In order to gain perspective on that, we speak to Leah Wang, Head of Business Development for the Asia Pacific region at PrimeXM and her particular take on how to structure things in China. The Chinese clients, has, um, the region has not that much knowledge about technology compared to the mature markets, That's for very example, true. Europe. That's very true. Yes. And um, uh, what they want, the brokers they want there is just a big marketing and uh, whatever investment or rely heavily on the plugins or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. yes for However, sure. they, the least they pay attention is the technology and infrastructure. However, this is the most important thing they should pay attention. And the technology, what we're referring to, they should pay more attention are the software and the hardware and the connectivity between the different continents, Most for certainly. example, from uh, Europe to the Asian. So this falls back to what we want to educate the client are about you need to have a technology provider that is reliable and professional enough to have their own infrastructure like they have their like top level and really used for financial trading software and hardware and they have their own data center that can connect actually physical connect to the tier one banks or the liquidity providers that's how you can actually reduce the latency right. and increase the secure and the um, stable stability that's absolutely right i think yes. there's a, there needs to be some kind of way of on mass demonstrating this to the brokerages in the, in the in the region because that way they are constantly looking for the the best speed of execution because of the automated nature of a lot of the trading that's done in in, in that region yes. high volume and usually automated yes they are. Uh, we see a lot of like EAs or yes. what kind of uh, plugins, high yes. frequent the application they are using. However, the fundamental thing you need is not how good. Maybe it's one of the reason how good the EAs themselves are. However, more important thing is you need to have a solid uh, infrastructure that, for example, collocate your. And trading platform in the right place where That's it's right. clo as close to the liquidity source as possible. That's absolutely right. I agree. In, a, in a redundant environment as well. Exactly. This, like you mentioned, down to the hardware and the physical components, switches, firewalls, routers, all these things. And yes, this is also one of the, I would say, the qualification of a proper technology provider you need to have high level of redundancy so in case one fails down and you have the very fast reaction you can get the server back to up and have a up, uh, optimum uptime that's absolutely right actually it's, it's what's interesting is that for the last 30 30 years ever since the ibm middleware systems were used in bank in, uh, in bank trading desks for powering right powering trading servers on multi-asset OTC, but multi-asset uh, distribution from banks. Um, there has been that kind of environment. In-house redundancy, if you, were, if you went in the early 1990s to any major tier one bank, you would see on site massive racks of Cisco switches, PBX switches for the telecom, for in-house telecom switching between different uh, different servers in the bank and, and actual redundancy, separate ones which were not used but they were absolute replicas and constantly replicating for the live servers. Yes. 
So when the retail trading industry came about, some of the brokers with their own platform came from that environment and actually developed it in that way. But having a third party solution such as MetaTrader gave brokerages that didn't come from the same industry as us originally a chance, maybe they came from a marketing sector or from something else, internet based e-commerce sector or something like that, and they could get rid of all the uh, responsibility of having to worry about um, computer software and comes in sales and marketing they thought this is all handled for us but for the last 11 years there has been no concentration by a great many brokerages on redundancy on ensuring that they've got enough uh, switches and routers in place that they have got a backup uh, a file backup system that's constantly replicating this is something which doesn't necessarily exist unless they outsource their systems to a FX industry integration and technology specialist of which there aren't many in existence i mean in fairness to the brokers though it's it's, it's highly expensive very expensive to, and requires a lot of expertise to set this up which so. is why outsourcing it to a specialist is the best it's idea it's the perfect way you know because then they can concentrate on their brokerage business that's growing right. their business bringing in new which is clients, what they're good at that's what and they went over in. the infrastructure side and, the, and so the reliability and performance is taken care of exactly. by a trusted technology partner that's right we're happy this is this is the world we live in <laughs> and, and we like to play in this world they like to play in, in the brokerage world and we come That's together right. and we have we both we both uh, ride off the back of each other's success indeed in that, in that sense and this is what we're looking and for. actually that that is another emulation of the institutional world but it's bringing it at a less expensive cost into the hands of the retail trader you're absolutely right it's, it's true institutional grade technology that the retail sector it now has access to yes and and then this you know this is very true and it's great also for the for the end clients, the traders, because they're actually getting much more sophisticated, reliable and high performing systems um, that really, really weren't available, you know, going were back not, five, 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 ten even years a ago. short time ago. Yeah. And actually, this is this is the question is whether nowadays with such a, a lack of value proposition in some of the in, among some of the smaller to medium sized companies that use off the shelf trading platforms, they should really be looking towards uh, allowing the development, allowing us some kind of sandbox for the development of future retail trading platforms and the technology that powers them. It's a conservative attitude at the moment and I think that, some, some, that something must be done to actually allow some kind of future, future-proofing uh, development sandbox. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, look, I think as a technology provider, you know, we, we have to be ever-evolving. Um, of course because you're quite right, you know, with regulation changes and this kind of thing as a tech partner, we have to be there to have a framework ready at least to support the, um, the brokers so they can conform with any regulatory changes, as well as delivering a service that they need to stand out from the crowd with their competitors with reliability, performance, uh, scalability and flexibility of the systems as well. So um, it is a big job, but it's fun um, it and is. I believe you know, the main investment is building this infrastructure and this is the route Prime XM chose to go on at the early stage, which, which required a huge investment, but it really does now pay, is paying dividends. Indeed, and um, actually I think there's going to be some more opportunity to have, mentioning scalability, mm. now with MetaTrader 5 becoming, the, it's going to become the de facto off-the-shelf platform from MetaQuotes because mm -hmm. MetaTrader 4, there'll be no more new licenses issued. So existing licenses will be supported, but no new licenses will be issued on Metroid 4. So Metroid 5, if you're a brokerage which is expanding to different regions of the world, there's only one server required for multiple sites. Whereas with Metroid 4, you had to have a separate server yeah, for each like site. data centers. Data centers yeah, and yeah. on-site equipment that was more expensive to lease from Metatrade, MetaQuotes. Now you need one. So I think this is something which will affect the scalability possibilities of, of many brokerages. That's actually very true and important. This is also somehow for the emerging market, uh, not specifically to China, however, also Southeast Asia, for yes. example, they didn't yet r realize because maybe they're thinking, okay, I may prefer to go to like all in one solution. However, um, they, they think it would be save my cost, save my like, um, personnel or whichever for that moment however from my point point of view it's more costly from a longer term because okay you need to start with one technology provider or with one like all-in-one 
pro provider. And then after you grow to a sp specific level, you need to change everything from scratch. You need to change your LPs because you may used to be forced to use specific LPs because of this provider. And then you need to change your LPs, you need to change your technical infrastructure, everything. And uh, when you change, maybe your team is lack of the knowledge and the time spent is also very costly, yes. I would say. So that's important actually, from my point of view, it's like a cost saving or a smart way to do is to get a system that can support you from the very beginning to a, a big growth, maybe even starting as a white label until you become, you have your own server and then you become a higher level of broker and prime of prime to prime, even a bank. So our yeah. solution next core, that is the, I would say it's the solution that the can support. Really, yeah, yeah. yeah, it can support people's growth because it can connect it to multiple trading platform, MT4, MT5, or even your customized uh, trading platform. And you can also change and add LPs as you want. We will never force you which LP you have to choose if you use PrimeXM. We will leave the flexibility and the choice to the client. So anytime you just need to change one connector, either from the LP side or from the, the liquidity taker side. So you can have every data in the same system just to change the connectors. Mm -hmm. I see. That's, a, that's all, again, it's reducing the cost of scalability of a brokerage. And that's something which a lot of them face a problem with because the margins have been driven down, profit margins have been driven down so much by so many white label partner uh, brokerages and so many yes. uh, almost identical platforms which are very similar apart from the logo and actually probably fed by the same liquidity source because of the white label partnerships. So with the introduction of MetaTrader 5 and the, and the type of scalability that you mentioned there, this could empower some of the smaller brokers to get away from the kind of, uh, I don't like to use this phrase, but churn and burn situation that they're in, that they find themselves in in some cases. If they're too small to develop their business further, it could provide some kind of elevation of their business to a higher level without much cost. True. I mean, look, as, as an FX broker in the retail space, especially a new one, we, we, we talked about it earlier, very difficult to differentiate yourself. That's right. So if I'm a startup broker, then Especially the, the one thing you've got to get right is reliability and performance. Yes. It doesn't matter how great your account manager is or how great your bonuses are. That's right. At the end of the day, if clients uh, get constant slippage yeah. or order rejections, they're going to leave you. So yes. again, if you're, even if you're a startup, mm -hmm. although our solutions are used by a lot of mature entities, you want to get the foundation right, as Leah said. You want the performance to be the best and then build, build on from there. So yes. it, it, it's false economy going out to get just an out-of-the-box solution that it might is. be good for MetaTrader with 100 clients on it. But if your ambition is only that, then you, know, you, 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 know, you, sh you should look, look further. Well, yes, and you're right, because what will happen is, with retail, especially in the retail, the, the, bottom, the, the smaller retail brokerages, is that if you don't get it right at the beginning, it will go all over Forex Peace Army and all those retail, yeah. b retail portals because retail traders do know if they're being slipped, even if they're novice traders, they do know. They will go and check and they do know and they will resort to immediate forums, forum publication, yeah. and that's the end because if you can't st establish a small brokerage from the beginning with a good reputation and good, good yeah. service, yeah. it won't work. And many retail traders, they're trading with multiple brokers at the same time usually. Yes. It's very rare that they're yes. just trading with one. And they so. can see the differences. Exactly, so you don't want to disadvantage yourself by having a, a poor performance. That's right. So it's worth that in, if, the, if the intention is to either, not, either to grow, grow at all or not to grow, but, in, but get a good quality client base that are loyal because the cost of turning the clients over is usually higher than the, than the initial deposit. This, this is true, yeah. So true. to get that right, execution right in the first place and avoid those um, very off-putting comments on retail forums that will actually do, do what well, could finish the business, you know? Exactly. It is very important. That's also what I'm uh, always joking with my clients. Actually, I said, well, you can invest a lot on your marketing. You can invest a lot of finding good salespeople. You can expose quite a lot on all the expos or whatever. But the very important thing, if you really want to do a long-term business, is like building a skyscraper. The very important thing is the ecosystem of your technology. So you need to have a solid basement to support your growth in yes. the future. The higher you grow, the 
the more important to have a solid fundamental thing That's it right. is. I agree. Yeah. And of course we've touched heavily upon you know the, the infrastructure and the software which is all needed but the further ways a technology partner can help their clients is in this true partnership in exactly. okay we can help you on the the physicality and that, that side of it but with this XCore community what we're also trying to do is empower our, our clients to grow their businesses by working with each other as well so it really is by looking at our clients as a true partner Yes, yeah. and these words are easily thrown, uh, thrown around in this industry, but mm -hmm. you can, you know, we can see by by results that that that, that really, the, the efforts really pay off from doing that, um, and really work work with work with your clients as partners and give them the technology they need, but also give them the support uh, and everything as well. Yes. and obviously, Leah heads up a lot of our, all of our <laughs> business over at in APAC, but also has a hands on our account management teams as well. So, you know, we're trying to put a structure in place where. Our clients yes. right down from technical to general to levels of support that their the clients are looked after and have that um, have that comfortable feeling. Yes, very yes. important. Uh, actually, I think that also that customer relationship with the broker mm -hmm. shows shows some kind of synergy that is necessary because a lot of brokerages don't really want to get themselves involved in the in their own technology, even though they are in a technologically advanced business. So they need to have some kind of partner that works alongside them all the time. Mm -hmm. And actually there are also brokers which are fintech companies, right. which also use PrimeXM, because we know of one example which has a very large, long-standing relationship with PrimeXM, which actually is a developer of its own systems. So this is another uh, synergy with, with an actual technologically advanced brokerage that puts tech first. Then there are other brokers which put sales and marketing first, but they still need to be very engaged with their integration and technology provider. There's no way of working otherwise. Yes, and also each individual's the resources they have or the network they have is quite limited. So for most of the time, our clients, for example, if they want to uh, looking for uh, expand their business with different LPs, that's also what we can help our clients to get in, use our Xcore community to get into the different. Uh, chance to of LPs or also for example if they want a like a plugin company even though we ourselves we don't we don't provide such however there are a lot of like partners that is use, working with us and compatible with us we can also make such referrals and just to hope to provide the best services and solutions to our clients and assist them to grow here at the Sailor's Rest Lounge Bar and Restaurant at the St. Raphael Resort in Limassol, Cyprus, we speak to Richard about what exactly happens when a broker connects its platform to PrimeXM's technology and overall how infrastructure can connect global retail customers to institutional liquidity. Certainly over the last few years, even as much as 10 years by now, the MetaTrader 4 and now the MetaTrader 5 system have become an open market, an open market access tool for many retail traders, which is something which has become embraced by the trading community and the brokerage community. But what really goes on behind that isn't so well known, apart from a very a small handful of specialist firms in this industry that provide that particular service. And actually PrimeXM is one of the major ones. No, indeed, indeed. And uh, yeah, the MetaTrader 4 platform certainly has gained a huge amount of popularity over the years. 85% um, of the market or something like that. Indeed, you know, close close to a monopoly. Um, you know, in itself is a good platform, um, but with any, any front-to-back uh, brokerage solution, um, the platform is very important. This is what the clients are going, you know, going to, to face and use. Um, but more importantly, it's the performance and the reliability of that platform is not just within the software of the platform itself, it's also in the, the way that platform actually connects to Absolutely the global right. liquidity markets. And this is right. where a company like PrimeXM um, c come into play mm -hmm. um, and actually connect that platform through a uh, global infrastructure to the actual global markets. Yes. So indeed. this is this is something that has become a lot more sophisticated over the years. Um, I think gone are the days now where um, orders come in from the platform and go to a dealing desk. Um, actually, a lot of orders now with the the access we can provide to actual global markets orders are actually i would suggest uh, become actually getting real execution now the orders are actually coming through to the platform and actually routing through the systems um, through to the execution engine that should be 
co-located to where the liquidity yes. providers are yes, and agree. actually being executed right through to the LP and then all the way back then to the platform. So it's, I think it's a fair way for the end clients now. Um, it's real market execution. But I think the, the, key, the key point, Andrew, is the speed of execution is very important. Very important. There's nothing worse for, for a broker to, and, and any broker will tell you, getting complaints from, from, from clients about slippage. Now, there's no way you can eliminate this, but by having a technology and an infrastructure um, that is co-located and very low latency, um, can, can, can obviously limit the slippage. Yes, it can. So the faster you can get that order from the MetaTrader terminal uh, to the actual liquidity provider source and back again, the more chance the client's going to get the price that he actually uh, executed Absolutely on. So right. Absolutely right. And actually, the, that's very important. It's something that should not be overlooked because it, what you're getting now by doing that is the, an emulation of the institutional proprietary trading desks of Chicago, New York, and London, sure. and of the uh, institutional banking traders who are actually doing this on very, very extensive, um, extensively developed in-house platforms, mm -hmm. and conveying that in a very reasonably priced way to the retail trader through a, a piece of software they're very used to. And by doing so, emulating that type of uh, execution without the dealing desk being there. And that is a very vital part of the trading infrastructure for retail traders to bear in mind. It's actually a very important thing that brokers can sell to their traders. Absolutely. And, you know, this is where choosing uh, the correct technology partner can be invaluable to a brokerage. Um, it can lower in-house expertise yes. and knowledge um, and handing over that infrastructure and connectivity component to a trusted technology provider, um, uh, you know, leaves the broker to focus on getting the clients in, looking after the clients, uh, and, and you know, do, doing what they're best at. That's for and, sure. And, this, and, and you're right, I think the systems have become a lot more sophisticated nowadays. Um, I'm, although a lot of retail brokers um, have, ac you know, have access to different technologies, there are, there are a few on the market that are actually true institutional grade now. That's right. So they're similar sort of performance levels as, as you would get you know, from institutional sort of uh, brokerages as well now. That's, which is great for the retail clients, uh, uh, trader, the traders, uh, but also great for the brokers so they can give access to you know, superior performance. Because let's face it, in this world, Andrew, for a broker, it's very difficult to stand out from each other. Very difficult, especially when they're using a third-party platform. It could cost, for example, CMC Markets, a couple of years ago, started to invest in the redevelopment of their trading platform. Yep. And it wasn't a development from scratch, it was a redevelopment. It still cost over a hundred thousand, sorry, over a hundred million dollars mm. to do that. So for a, bro for a medium to small-sized brokerage who wants to actually provide a high quality of a trading experience to their customers, $100 million is completely inaccessible. Yes, it's indeed. out of reach. Indeed. So the only way to do it is to provide a, a third-party platform, and that does, of course, mean that they are taking a third-party infrastructure where the IP isn't necessarily on their own platform, but it's a good compromise. But the MetaTrader platform was designed to be a closed unit with a dealing desk behind it. So now what we're doing right. now is we're seeing a few, 10, 12 years later, that particular front end, which has become the de facto choice for retail traders yep, yep. for various reasons, including mostly the third party software availability that connects to it for retail traders to be able to develop themselves. Yeah, absolutely. The EAs and things EAs uh, that, and that was so a, a forth. very strategic absolutely. part it was of indeed. the success. Yeah. Very much so, especially in certain regions of the world, like the Asia Pacific region. So that sure. is now a, 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 the MetaTrader 4 and 5 is now ingrained in people's minds as the de facto choice. Yeah. So the question is removing that kind of um, dealing desk aspect of it and turning it turning that interface into an institutional grade trading platform has been a transition but it has also sure. been a transition which has refined itself over the course of years because Absolutely. companies like Prime XM have continued to, to develop their co-location systems and uh, execution services and and also the way the, the way the way your actual trading solutions hosted no indeed I mean <clears throat> companies like us you know we're always looking to innovate you know, I mean, uh, we have a fairly simple yet ambitious uh, sort of mission statement, and that is, uh, you know, to provide cutting edge uh, innovations to, to redefine or to define the, the, the future of the industry. And you're right that the solutions now, um, as we mentioned before, are, are very sophisticated. They are. Um, and so therefore it adds another, for a brokerage that has this fast, reliable uh, execution, it, it's another way for them to try and set themselves apart from 
other other competitors in the it market. Is. If they're all using the same platform, well, then you can't set yourself apart there. So then it becomes down to how your customer service is, how fast and reliable your execution is, and how good your pricing is. And yes. actually, for most part of that, your technology provider is key here. It is key. It is you know key. to provide that 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 infrastructure. Um, where the liquidity providers are and also to it's very important to understand um, where the trading platforms are hosted as well that's vital i agree for someone from my point of view who comes from that background you know i spent uh, 18 years working on infrastructure for banks and hosting and, and server deployment and things like yeah. that across multi-site so that in the retail now that's where we now are in the retail sector so for this sure. is very important i think it's important for brokerages and clients to understand how all that works no, indeed, indeed. You know, longer the days uh, have gone of hosting the platform in, in your office or somewhere like that. I mean, there's three major locations where all the global liquidity right, comes right. from. Uh, in Equinix data centers, London LD4, New York MY4, and Tokyo, Tokyo TY3. Exactly. Tokyo is, is, is still the, um, the least used at the moment, but it is growing, uh, growing uh, as, a, as a data center. But the point is, you, if you want to offer fast, reliable execution, you need to have a good platform, you need to have good software, but import, more importantly, it's where that software interacts with the market. So this is where you host your server. So companies like PrimeXM, um, aside from the connectivity uh, and the bridging that we offer, we would also host those servers in those environments, right, so right next to the liquidity Right, so inside Equinix's data center was where the hosting would take place by PrimeXM. Exactly, so <clears throat> it's very important to choose uh, a technology provider that is actually got their own infrastructure in that environment. So for example, for PrimeXM, we have a physical presence that's managed by our own network team in these data centers. Right. So all the physical connections to all the, the, the liquidity providers, of which we have 150, uh, they're direct, dedicated connections for PrimeXM managed by us. That's, that, actually, Richard, that's very important because the actual managing, the managed services is happening inside Equinix's locations, which is connected exactly. to, uh, as you say, 150 liquidity providers might be available within PrimeXM from customers that use PrimeXM. Correct. However, all of the venues, the trading venues of the world, whether they are exchanges or OTC mm. non-bank market makers or like XTX or Citadel or any of those so, so for institutional providers are all hosting in those particular centers. So you've got PrimeXM dedicated connectivity managed from within the actual facility of the data centers. Indeed, so you've got the set, your software provider that's also managing the front, you know, the, the front to back process because they're managing the network as well. Um, and you know, this is, this is a key component. Mm -hmm. um, with, with a brokerage, you need to re uh, remain flexible you and have, sc have scalability. So it's important to, for a brokerage to have a technology set up and then say outgrow it and go back to the market and have to, to, to start again or find That's a provider right. that can meet their new needs. This is very difficult. So what we try to do at PrimeXM, and I believe we achieve quite well, is, is offer that scalability through all of our software, having uh, all the functionality from a basic brokerage setup right up to a full institutional grade Prime Prime setup. And of course, it's not just as simple as having the tools, it's also having the network capacity to actually uh, handle and, and so, so resources that are provisioned correctly to handle high, high loads. Yes, I understand. So yeah. it's all well and good looking at a system that can handle an average trading day. But as we know in the markets, we have these big volatile times, news trading or yes. crazy times like the SMB. Yes, indeed. Now it's very important that the systems can actually be provisioned to handle these peak times. And this That's is right. how we actually set up our system. So 98% of the time, the load may only be 2% on the system, but it needs to be able to handle the, the high load capacity. And this is a, another important factor to consider when you're a broker to understand what is the nature of the infrastructure set up behind uh, the technology provider. Absolutely. Uh, for redundancy and reliability, this is, this is highly important. So co-location is very important. Having software that can handle high, high loads and an actual um, network uh, hardware level that is provisioned in such a way that it can handle these peak loads. Yes. Indeed. This is important. And actually what you're doing by doing that is creating a situation where a risk management desk inside a brokerage, whether it's doing, whether they're doing it themselves or whether they've got their own modern version of a dealing desk where they have risk managers actually uh, sending trades to liquidity providers via this particular system, 
or if they're outsourcing it to companies like IS Risk Management in, in Michigan, there are outsourced solutions for this, they can actually be sure that there will be no, um, no likelihood of certain orders being slowed down on their way to the provider yeah. because of high load on other orders. So there's more capacity than there Indeed. is likelihood of market volatility. No, I think, I think you're right. And again, that, that comes down to having a sophisticated order management system. Um, uh, PrimeXM provides that, right? Indeed, yes. as part of our primary product, Xcore. Yes. Um, the, the broker has any number of ways to set up uh, their liquidity provision, their order routing for different clients. Even down to the fact they can have certain groups of, of, of clients being executed with a certain LP, or they can create different aggregated flows. Uh, that can suit the different types of clients, either on meta or institutional fixed API right. clients, they can have dedicated pools of liquidity to suit that client. That keeps the client happy, but it also ensures the orders are executed um, in the best way, in the fairest way, um, uh, yeah, with, with a view to, to, to keep the clients happy and, uh, and also the regulators and, uh, yes, that's and such, which very are clamping important. down they on are, this Especially the MIFID regulator. Here in Cyprus, um, you have part of the remit for a lot of retail brokerages here is that they are under the, the new MIFID II regulations. Which is which just is the dreaded MIFID II. It's the dreaded MIFID II, exactly. And in it's, principle, it's good, but I think it's a big transition. It's, a, it's, it's, a it's massive, quite a lengthy... It's a uh, massive uh, transition. And it's widely misunderstood because through no fault of our industry, but because it hasn't been very well explained. So it's so, it's so detailed. There's well, so much to it, yeah. So much to it. But the point, the, the, a large proportion of it, it is centrally an, interest, an infrastructure directive. So trade execution is, is vital, uh, is a vital tenet of this particular thing. So not only how you execute the trade in favour of a customer, yep. but which particular components those trades are going through will be part of the examination that the regulators will take a look at now. Yeah, fair execution, best execution rules, yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and if they are, how the trades are being cleared and processed. Yeah, why you, why you executed that trade in the way you did, was that the best for the client? And that's right. Yeah, Even correct. to the point of whether you're using a prime of prime brokerage liquidity provider that gives specific favourable terms yeah. to that brokerage for using them. Yeah. So through the Xcore product, you can actually aggregate prime of primes and send the orders to specific prime of primes that give you give can the right terms. I mean the it sort of goes a prime of prime really I mean there's, there's several different kinds of liquidity relationships a broker can have so you can have traditional margin accounts with a number of different uh, liquidity providers yes. um, which could be uh, other brokers um, ECNs yes and uh, obviously with prime XM we, we, we support and connect to everywhere um, and then you can aggregate these different flows. So you might want to aggregate a non-bank flow with a bank flow, yes. uh, maybe a market maker. When it comes to aggregating prime of primes, really that goes against what the prime of prime job is. Actually, yeah, if, if you've, you've got, got a decent, one, if you've a got prop, a strong yes. prime of prime, then really the idea is that they're managing the aggregation That's for you. That's absolutely right. But the great thing about a system um, such as our X score, the Prime of X score, is the broker can then choose. They can have certain clients flow that comes through a prime of prime, and then they can aggregate other types of liquidity providers for other types of clients flow. So you really have that, again, scalability, flexibility of, 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 of at the system level for the broker to really set it up how, what's best for them, but more importantly, to give the best experience to the end client. Again, it comes back to differentiating themselves from the competition. Yes, it does. And which so is if a you major can tailor the execution there. process for the client, again, it's something else that you can use when you speak to more experienced clients or even to attract institutional clients. If you say to them, we can customize a, a liquidity pool just for you to come and trade with us, um, then it shows that you're not just this, this meta trader, um, old school broker, you know, it shows that you've got a bit more sophistication and you've got the ability to, to accommodate, you know, proper institutional type trading. And let's face it, a retail broker, fair enough if they just want to face on the re uh, uh, deal with the retail market, but at the end of the day, any client that comes across your door, you want to offer a solution to nowadays you do indeed. because of the competition with a system, um, with a with an innovative sort of technology provider, you, you can have your MetaTrader product. You can offer them a trade, trading GUI. If they have, if they're more of a professional trader and they have their own front end, you, you want to have the ability to offer them fixed API. Yes. You can't remain static in this. And no, again, right. this is the kind of commitment that we make to our clients, that we want to give them every tool possible to be able to service any kind of client that comes across their paths. Yes, you indeed. Know, and it is, is about differentiation. It is also because you have 
I, we, we know that there are 1,231 current MetaTrader licenses yeah. in, acti in, ac in activity at the moment. Sure. They are, they're a combination of white label companies that are using the MetaTrader white label license, actual brokerages with servers, with MetaTrader servers, which is yeah. the majority, and also some companies with proprietary platforms and their own trading system that need to offer the MetaTrader as a separate system for other markets. So the, in total it's 1,231 actual live MetaTrader licenses that are, that are working at the moment. That's a lot of companies and a lot of entities that have to try to differentiate themselves from each other. No, indeed. I mean, and also all the white label clients, that's just the licenses, isn't it? Just so the you've licenses. probably got another, probably triple in, in yes. white label clients. Yes, so very likely. So, I mean, that, that, and that in label... itself shows you, you know, the, 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 na the competitive nature of, of what it's these brokers are dealing with. You know? And it's actually even worse because if you've got double the number of white labels, the white labels are constrained by what they're provided. They might be using the same provider. This so is true. it's hard to differentiate when they've got they're constrained by the by the parameters set by the same providers. So to be able to demonstrate good quality institutional level execution via non-bank market makers and yep. bank tier one banks via aggregated liquidity and hopeful hosting solutions is an emulation of the institutional world for a certain cost per million rather than having to pay institutional clearing fees. I think that's a, that, that's a great point. You know, um, I think some people uh, before they look at getting you know, a, a big uh, technology provider in have build up in their minds that it is actually a massive expensive cost and obviously to set it up um, from a technology provider point of view if with your own infrastructure like Prime is very costly but um, to the end user actually yeah, when, when you can put it all down to a cost per million that's right um, it actually is it's not as expensive at all as, as people might, might imagine no I know? agree um, and of course as we grow um, and as a companies like us grow then of course we can we can we can keep the margins as tight as possible you know at the end of the day we want to partner with the broker we're not just on a smash and grab that's right to, to come and take so to take some of their gold away from them <laughs> um, it's about empowering them with the tools to grow because we're a volume driven business as well yes indeed so we're always looking to a deliver the tools be committed to updating our system our infrastructure so that the, the broker doesn't lose clients because at the end of the day we want them to grow and, and, um, and do volume because well, they, of course we're right. going to make money that way too and, and this is an important point. Well there are some testimonies to that even. For example some of the large brokerages which not only have retail sector but they've gone into the institutional and financial technology development of their own are using the Primex MX Core as the only, outs, as the only third party software in their entire system. Correct. And some of them are quite large and have been going for some time and have actually told me that they will never use their own. Well, that's music to my ears, Andrew. They'll never I like use their to own. Hear that. <laughs> Even though they're developing their own trading platforms and their own servers, they will never use their own integration software. Sure, sure. But I think it just comes back to, you know, we've always wanted to be the leader. Um, you know, always we always strive for, for innovation. Um, and we're not just the software provider. The fact that we invested heavily in the beginning into this infrastructure, which is a massively important part of of what we offer um, because if we can offer software and hosting and we manage the environment uh, we, we, we can deliver a lot of scalability flexibility to the clients but also actually look them straight in the eye and say if you use our technology I can guarantee you're not gonna you're not gonna suffer from any sort of latency through our technology I mean our engines are, are sub millisecond processors yes, um, yes. and the nature of how they can connect to the global markets is virtually unlimited even for example I mentioned we have 150 ECNs, liquidity providers, prime of primes, banks, non-banks connected. Even if a client came to us and said, well, look, I, I want to use this obscure new uh, liquidity provider that we haven't connected to, well, we can establish that connection because it's our network. Now, if you're dealing with a software provider that's facing a third party infrastructure provider, then it's not going to be as flexible or as easy to, to, to add these uh, additional liquidity providers in, you know. Right. So, this is, this, this is something that um, I believe we're very strong in and goes back to our, why I believe that a lot of clients tend to be quite sticky with Prime XM um, because the system works, it's reliable, it's fast and they see that we're always innovating and, and driving it forward. So this is certainly the goal for the future and uh, well, a consistent goal, shall we say, going into the future. That's excellent. Thank you very much for joining us here today, Richard. Very nice to see you. Thank always. you very much, Andrew. All the best. In conclusion, looking at technological infrastructure for a retail brokerage is of vital importance. These days, with such a fintech-orientated business structure, 
it is very important that brokerages looking to emulate the institutional sector choose the right technological partner. That is something which, in terms of looking at what we've spoken about here today at PrimeXM, should be taken into account. Thank you for watching. See you next time.